Oh no, but it's all the way down. Hmm. Gets me every time. Every time. Hello. 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 Hope everyone's having a uh, wonderful, if not fantastic. Thing. Uh, I am your uh, your humble guide for the world of 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 judo. My name is Robert Nolan, um, head instructor of Cactus Judo in Arizona, uh, Aikido as well, um, here in Phoenix, Arizona, um, just off the corner of. Uh, 7th Avenue and Calvet. Come see us. Edit that in now. Um, <clears throat> so this evening I wanted to talk about uh, World Judo Day. Today is World Judo Day and, and there's no better a time to talk about judo and, and Dr. Kano's contribution. Um, I'm going to do like a thing real quick. I want to like jump into my gi. I'm going to like TikTok thing, right? That's what I'm doing. Right? <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I am gonna go like do the dogi thing and then we're gonna come back and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, I've collected some some uh writings on the theme for for this year's um topic on World Judo Day, which is sol solidarity. Uh, which is really exciting to me because it's something that's sorely, sorely needed the world today um and the fact that it's judo that's that's talking about it uh that, that how we need it and it's making its mission to uh to, to bring more solidarity to the world on the occasion of dr kano's birthday um it pleases me it pleases me greatly um so hang tight relax uh you know maybe get into a little bit of a of a seiza position I, it's it's hard to do floating in the air, okay? But we might be able to go over it. We might be able to change some camera angle, okay? We're gonna do a costume change. I'll see you guys in a second. Maybe over here. Yeah. Always know that you're getting old by uh, how tight your your dogi is. Look at me! I look like Sensei Bob with the. I am one of. There we go. 
go. We'll do know how to put the uniform on. As Will Smith said. My these are the uh kanji for Is an old dogi, well, I would ne I'm never allowed near competition ever again in this dogi. I have already been uh, had my hand slapped one times. <laughs> no, yeah, this is definitely not a competition uh, spec dogi anymore. Um, they have very uh, so uh, we're gonna get off to uh, some some supplemental. Uh, that I certainly wanted to cover. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very vain, so I had to. I had to fix. It. Trying to decide other elements that I wanted to add in here, um, outside of our our normal narrative. I'm actually. Very excited to also explain the the, the Google dude for uh for this. Very exciting. I'll show you a slide. Look at that. That I even got it set up so it moved around all on its own. I, I just did it again. We're gonna talk. We're gonna we're, so we're gonna talk about Dr. Kano's story. We're going to talk about uh, the theme, uh, what is World Judo Day, why we do it, um, and then also what this year's theme is and why it's important um, is kind of what I want to go over. Uh, hanging out with me, uh, allowing me to do my uh, my costume change, and sheen. Um, but it's just because I'm so excited for, uh, for, for Judo Day. Um, it's something that's extraordinarily close to my heart. We're going to move. Hello. Hello. World Judo Day is something that's that's really close to my heart because, um, you know, uh, I practice judo. Something uh, not only uh, semi-professionally, but also as a... Um, as a... Uh, I, I want to say a, a teaching of life, a method... For, for navigating life. I've got a whole deal here that I, I, I really want to go over. You guys are going to hear about it. Hang tight. Ignore the tiny dog. Ignore the tiny dog. No, 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 no. That's fine. I just want to make sure that the that the Google dude goes back. Very unhappy dogs. Very unhappy dogs. Uh, but that's what happens. This time of night, people could walk the dogs. These things happen. I just need to uh, put my other reading material up here. Yeah. Then I think you had something like that maybe. No, you don't. I've 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 lost the sauce. Control Z. What 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 on earth has happened here?
What on earth has happened here? And what is going on with this dock? Hang on. It's a, it's a tiny dog problem. I mean, it's a very well-known tiny dog problem. Too small. Just, uh, we're, we're, I'm doing it live, okay? It, it's, it's O'Reilly style. We're, we're doing it live. Oh, baby. There we go. Okay. Why did I have to do all of that? Okay. So that I can get us back to the point. Did it reset it again? No, it didn't. Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure because it was eluding me for a moment. Okay, excuse me. Get back there. I need you. Back there. <clears throat> supplemental information. <clears throat> I can't pretend that I have all of the supplemental information, you know, like locked in the noggin. That's why we kind of have to do what we are doing. Hello. I, I would like to be up here. Yes. Um, so I'm summoning the courage. <laughs> uh, it's it's one thing to, to teach a class, and it's another one to create semi-educational content. Um, so you're going to have to forgive me if, if any of this information is contrary uh, to what you already know. This is simply the information taught to me, passed down to me. It, it, it always is highly likely, not probable, that it is not true. There is a certain amount of, uh, uh, you know, lore that uh, is in martial arts school. That said, uh, judo largely is free from this because if judo, you're either good, prove that you understand the principles of judo, or you can't. There's not a lot of middle room for superfluous this that, that doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, prove our metal on the mats um and that that remains true that remains true um so what is what is judo well uh judo is uh, officially known as kodokan judo started by dr jiguro khan um and taken on the honorary title uh in uh 1882 he's old and he has just graduated university um, by the way, uh, shout out to the Kodokan Judo uh, dot com. Not only where I'm looking at uh, supplementary information right now, but where I also uh, when I uh, was when I was in Japan, I was studying Judo at the Kodokan, um, and it was fantastic. Any Judo practitioner, if you have the opportunity, to study the Kodokan, that you certainly should. I did. My sensei did. And say before him, he did. Uh, he did <laughs> study judo, not English, uh, certainly. Um, uh, so judo's derived from it was a Japanese traditional martial art. Jiu-jitsu is a martial art that uses techniques such as throwing, holding, poking, hitting. And this is true. So ancient judo does have a temiwaza where there was striking or chopping, uh, you know, certain strikes, the ligature, um, uh, you know, or other uh, critical areas. But, uh, and, and, and some of that does remain, not a lot of people know, 
that there is a temiwaza for striking in judo, uh, but it's kind of left to katas to traditional forms of, um, and so really only uh, more experienced practitioners uh, that are kind of more experienced in judo have all of the basics underneath them uh, clearly uh, go on to, if any, at, learn any at, at all, uh, any striking. Or... That, that's important. That's certainly important. I'm also hoping most of this audio is going through. I know I've had some dating issues in the past, and I'm really hoping that's not what's happening here. Uh, you know, I want to be presenting the best material that I possibly can. And it would certainly really hurt my feelings if uh, I uh, just, uh, you know, hit F on, uh, on on World Judo Day. But so, Kano Shihan studied two styles of jujitsu, Enjin Kyo Ryu and Kito Ryu. Among many other jujitsu is this true? Dr. Kano studied um, various different schools of jujitsu uh, during his uh, he was a, uh, from my understanding, a uh, sickly sort of small child, um, like it apparently many martial arts, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily prodigies, but many martial arts adepts uh, come from uh, the beginnings that it, we never seem to attribute martial arts masters, but Dr. Kano was a, was a small sick, that's my not. Um, and Not only learning jiu-jitsu techniques, he that he was able to develop fine people by indicating the way of living through jiu-jitsu training. This is also true as of the inherent principles that he learned through uh, through ancient jiu-jitsu. Uh, he learned more about uh, this um, kind of cultural Taoism that existed uh, in. Japanese cultural at the, at, the, at the time, and especially, uh, you know, had permeated uh, jujitsu, um, both uh, Buddhism and 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 uh, Taoism uh, principles and philosophies concepts uh, can readily seen find um, uh, many martial arts, but particularly you know, with its emphasis talent um, and um, kind of like avoiding extremes to a certain extent and then also because it has a a, a a I would say a philosophical and like civil sort of uh compass to it uh it it, it, it is sort of in line with that Taoist thought of uh of you know being like a a moral code to live by in addition to art certainly um and that's been something that's that's guided me as well. But finally, he sublimated jujitsu. That was a fighting method into judo. He boiled it all the way down, took those parts that he loved, where it emphasized that you don't have to be strong. You have to be really good at technique. You have to be a, a giant. Um, uh, you know, he boiled all of that down from all of the different schools of jujitsu that. And, and 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 the the, the synthesis that was created, uh, he originally, Kano, and orig and then it would go on to be called uh, Judo. Um, his dojo was named the Kodokan. That means the school for studying the way. The way is is the gentle way of of Judo. Um, and 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 is a very truncated, very short version uh, of Doctor Kano. There's so much. He's such a fascinating person. Uh, was a school administrator. So aside from being a sickly child, when he was a a youth um, studying um, in era Japan, um, would study uh, jujitsu under um, a former samurai named Fukuda, whose granddaughter would go on to one of his uh, last original students. Uh, and uh, Keiko Fukuda uh, was a fantastic uh, inst uh, instructor that we had here in the, the West Coast of the United States, California. Um, and one of my personal instructors also trained under Fukuda. And it really just kind of goes to show you um, the 
interconnectedness of, of the community, how we've all learned from each other, how we are all disciples of, of, of Dr. Kano in some way. I, to me, that's very special because I always look back at uh, uh, Sensei Bob and what Sensei Bob did and what who came before Sensei Bob, which was Sensei Katamoto. And before Sensei Katamoto, it, he actually studied at the Kodokan with, uh, uh, with um, Mifune Sensei. And Mifune Sensei is famously, uh, you know, uh, from for being one of uh, Dr. Kano's original students. Really goes to show how interconnected we are. Um, and that brings us to kind of today's the theme for the discussion, which is um, solidarity. Um, and so we're going to transition over to it, but I, I wanted to just show this off. Isn't this amazing? Take a look at this. Hang on. We're going to go. So there's that's young Dr. Kana, okay? And this is him testing his might in jujitsu, but uh, getting bested by those that were using strength. This is uh, young Dr. Kano, uh, you know, synthesizing the the totality of his jujitsu knowledge, boiling it down to this principle that softness beats hardness, that you don't have to be strong to defeat our opponent. Just need to know how to control them and how to, you know, understand the dynamics of the body. So Dr. Kano, you know, boiled all that down into something that was that was something similar, but now completely different and new. And and uh you know, and so judo was created. Created the Kodokan, famously, out of the tiny temple. Uh, and it was a very small temple. I, I believe it actually even translates out to small temple. Dr. Kano and his original disciples. And then how it's now progressed now to the place that uh, that's very familiar to me, which is like the international... Uh, training area over at the Kodokan, like the uh, oh, it's like the fourth floor or seventh. <laughs> I, I, I've I've been to this room. Uh, it's 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 a fantastic training facility. Not quite as cartoonish uh, as this, but certainly um, well worth the visit. How about that? How about that? I just want, I'll, I'll go through it again, just because I think it's so fascinating. It goes to the artist that took their, the time to, to uh, you know, illustrate Dr. Kano's life. So that we can talk about it. Certainly, uh, I, I, I'm very, very happy about it. So uh, let me get in here now, so we can talk about the theme of of this year's uh, World Judo Day. And again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here for World Judo Day. Look at Dr. Kano. He's very handsome. Here's a young Dr. Kano learning about ancient jujitsu, getting bested by strength, learning about the the, the techniques that emphasize softness, uh, knowing, understanding physics, uh, <laughs> positioning, momentum, physical, phys, uh, uh, physical education, and combining that all together with his traditional jujitsu education, and uh, and you know creating something new, creating uh, a judo, and that's when he uh, he founded uh, the, the the foundational school of the Kodokan at the Little Temple. Uh, uh, which would then later go on to be his original disciples, including um, uh, the likes of which we've already discussed, like um, Mifune Sensei or uh, Keiko Fukuda. Um, and then they would all go on to later have stu students like uh, Sensei Bob or myself um, into this place that, uh, that, that I and many other judoka around the world uh, know very well, like the international... Um, training hall at the Kodokan proper. It's 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 a fantastic facility, um, and it's uh, they were just so gracious when I was there. Um, 
you know, so, so bless the staff at the Kodokan. Um, I just wish that I had more time to train there. That was sort of my, uh, my, t my issue was that uh, I wanted to train more, um, and didn't really have that opportunity. Uh, I have photos of Sensei Bob's, um, of his, uh, student card from the Kodokan when he trained there. Um, and it's very, very funny. You can, you see his big, uh, Elvis Buffont, uh, kind of deal. Uh, it's very in with the times in which he visited. <laughs> um, and that makes me very happy to like go back and, and, and look at it to go back and look. This one we're gonna kill. I'm gonna leave the um the Senri Kuzenyo and uh Jitai Kyoe at the, the top here because I wanna talk about the maxims of judo at some point. Uh I just don't know if we'll have the opportunity. I mean we I'll make the opportunity, but uh you know. How does one broach the subject besides having it kind of on the screen so we can talk about it? It's it's the core tenet of judo. Um, it, it's it's the really the 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 synthesis of uh, all of those techniques that Taoist teaching I was telling you about that uh, sort of was inherent to the education that um, many Japanese scholars received at the time was this um, he boiled it down to these two notions these two notions that we have here um, on the screen with us now um, yeah see look. And so those two concepts uh, are are so critical to judo um, because it informs like everything we do. So so the the two concepts these are our two maxims our two mottos um, that really f that give us a foundation. And it's uh, Senryoku Zenyo uh, and Jitai Kyoe, and and both of these together are the mutual respect and benefit of other people and uh, maximum efficiency and minimal effort. So getting the maximum amount of effort or impact for the least amount of energy expended. Um, this was one of the things that when I very first learned judo um, really spoke to me because it was sort of scientific and I don't, I, by no measure had I, I consider myself a, um, scientist anyway but uh you know i had studied boxing a little bit and um nobody nobody freak out <laughs> uh i had studied boxing a little bit and and you know and there's definitely some science involved in the way that you're moving momentum uh, uh utilizing your body and controlling mass and things in, in boxing that i really appreciated um, but I, I guess I didn't understand the full breadth uh, of control that we can have over our bodies, um, you know, until I was already like eyeball deep into judo. Um, and I, and that's one of the things just from, you know, if we're talking about personal experiences, what's something you can take away uh, is uh, that uh, you can learn a lot about yourself from judo. Well, I'm, I don't know if people will tell you that. I definitely believe it's true. It's one of the truest things in the whole world. All right. And again, if you're hanging out and you're watching, I appreciate it. I'm going to be editing this stream. Similarly to Dr. Kano, we're going to be boiling it down to a uh, to a shorter video for YouTube consu consumption later on so that we can, you know, talk about Dr. Kano's accomplishments. Um, but... So let's let, let, let me diverge slightly for a moment to now talk now that we've talked about uh, what is you know who Dr. Kano is and and what he's about. What about World Judo Day? Don't freak out. <laughs> the the screen it, 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 it like it loads the 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 next white screen and it just like flashes in here. <laughs> so 
sorry if I whacked you. I'm very animated, very excited for, for World Drew today. Okay. I'm going to read this off to you. Oh, no. Don't, don't do that. How about, how about up here? Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> don't. See? Okay. We can, we can do this. Ignore the bumping. All right. Yes, I promise it's on right. It's just an old, a very old uh, OB. <laughs> okay, so this next, um, this is more supplementary. This one's from worldjudoday.com, um, which uh, posts a lot of the, in the supplemental information that we, uh, we I happen to get on the, of uh, World Judo Day each year. It changes each so every day or every year, every day celebrate judo uh anime and art emoji um but um but specifically one day a year we celebrate dr kano's uh birthday to make sure that the, the dogs were <clears throat> um so a commemoration for dr kano's birthday we celebrate world judo day and then i step over slightly to the side so that way i'm not like giving the old like backhand to uh the maxims of judo over there um so uh, to celebrate dr kano's birthday we have world judo day and um, so there's a little bit of information here. We can go over it. Uh, the great annual educational gathering of uh, the judo family based on judo values is approaching on the 28th of October 21st. Millions of judoka across the planet will meet physically or digitally to celebrate World Judo Day 2021. This year it's, is the theme of solidarity. It's been chosen and will guide all the actions carried out. And so to me, this was, was fundamental. Um, so many other times in the past year, um, I saw the opportunity to talk more about um, solidarity, what it means, uh, how it could benefit all of us right now, how we can cultivate more solidarity. Um, and, and, and that and really, it did, it spoke to me. So, what we did is I spoke. No barber or hairstylist in the valley. No. <laughs> it's 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 the green screen. It's the green screen. It's the green screen chopping it up. Funny ways. Okay. <laughs> I got I got a text. That's what the text was. <laughs> um so let, let, let me let me continue on with, with the message. Because the message is still really profound and then i'll touch on why uh there there just really is this existential need um explore it further develop it and maybe just talk about it more in the context of of you know what it what's going on so for four months all of humanity has been suffering from the close of the covid19 pandemic and that's absolutely true um each epidemic wave seems last yet inexorably it calls for another and another one despite the hardships despite the loved ones who have been taken away those we constantly care about the judo family has never been so united to overcome trials and has proven it in the most beautiful way possible during the most tokyo 2020 Olympic paralympic games um and certainly um the the, the games were um uh you know had a a a, a, sig a six significant weight to them past uh, period, and um, have their own trials and tribulations that are going to be outside of the realm of experience, even for someone that's like a semi-professional athlete. Like I'm not even close to being an athlete. Um, uh, so, as if catastrophe 
weren't enough, the world has been faced with other destructive plagues, political crises, thousands of refugees on the road, and climate crises, which endangered the very nature of life, continuing to storm over our heads. It's, it's real stuff. Yet, all is not gloomy, and there are many hope and dream, celebrating solidarity between peoples at the very heart of our societies beyond differences. Is part of this hope that the judo community is to promote, and I and I agree. Uh, there's so many parts of judo that inherently, uh, I feel like, build up solidarity, build up community. Dr. Kano was very um, uh, forthright about how he believed judo was a vehicle for bettering uh, not just you know his community, his society, but but uh, all all of mankind who brought could cross board um so in 2020 we celebrated world judo day around the theme together we are stronger what better theme to complete this than that of solidarity a, a solidarity that we want active and real just like the moral code of judo talking about solidarity is not enough not just about work that's very true in judo we talk about judo it, it's it's not, not simply enough to talk about it, to read it, to uh, even to watch it, right? Um, but if you want to know judo, you must do judo. Um, and, and Dr. Kano has a uh, similar word himself. When he told students, uh, I do not teach judo to teach pros. I teach you pros to teach judo. Um, and, and, and what he means is that judo is a device for teaching us about that uh, that resistance against um you know certain not all problems because certain problems in life require all resistance but uh, judo is about calculated resistance uh, a a gentle strategy is a, is a coin i perhaps uh, termed earlier or maybe i read in a book and i forgot all about it <laughs> but certainly in judo, we apply strength uh, strategically, um, tactically, uh, in a way that the point is not to inflict harm, but it is to control the outcome of a uh, of a dynamic. And again, that's something that I've always appreciated about judo <clears throat> that it, it's a it really sells itself as a method of navigating, not necessarily of how to win a fight. Um, often I'll have students ask me, uh, uh, can I teach them to beat people up? And I can almost always tell them I can teach you how to not get beat up yourself. <laughs> and that may be the extent of my superpowers, but, um, you know, I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy. So the involvement of the International Judo Federation and many other national federations, as well as continental unions and projects such as Judo for Peace, Judo for Refugees, so for children, so all more illustrates the desire to say and do so that uh, Dr. Kano's dream of creating a more just society does not remain a utopia. And Dr. Kano's um, ha uh, had very real, um, concrete uh, goals. You know, he, he really believed he can improve society through Judo because it forces us to communicate with each other, to expose ourselves in a way where you're on the mat uh, you have to accept failure um, and uh, how you accept failure and how you decide to rise from it and accept input from your from your instructors it, that that education is so foundation um, for creating someone that wants to live uh, in a future that has prosperity for everyone and not some. Certainly. With the notion of solidarity, it's important to associate those of altruism, generosity, and charity. Alone, we cannot do much, but together it becomes possible to overthrow mountains. And this is so true, right? If judo allows the smallest of us to beat the largest, um, then some way uh, we can borrow the principles of judo and um, together um, 
uh, those of us that are small, big, big problems. Um, and I believe that. I, I, I definitely believe that. And that's something that I think we should, um, you know, put forward, certainly, uh, that, uh, that not just that anyone can be a problem solver for, for the world, uh, incipient, current, and future problems, but also um, that uh, we can then uh, in exponentially increase the likelihood of us solving those problems by working together. <laughs> um, we're, we're really magical in that way, and that, um, that I, I believe, and Juno teaches us, that the, that the magic of humanity is between, in that space between one person and someone else, right? It, the magic isn't in me, it, it, but it's between us. It's it's in our ability to form connections and bonds with each other. Um, and, and Judo reinforces that. Uh, you'll never meet anyone that like doesn't. Uh, uh, at least they're they're not there very long. Uh, that doesn't get along with their um their their Judo training partners because we're in some way we're so responsible for one another. Uh, care practice our technique. On say onage, right? You load someone up and you throw them, but you have to raise up. You have to pull them so that the, the, you have the safety grip so that you're also practicing good technique. So you're preparing yourself for the arm bar transition and to also so that you're not slamming your opponent on the ground every time. And it's your opponent's, uh, your partner's job to fall correctly and to be a good training partner so that you can practice the technique. So, so um, reinforce this, um, not a silent cooperation, but um, but like a, uh, a an insidious co uh, cooperation, a, a, a kind of cooperation that really invades your life and it, it, it makes you want to cooperate in all kinds of things. You realize that by working with your training partners, you got better at judo. So why wouldn't you, uh, you know, work better with your mates in class? Why wouldn't you, you know, try to get on better with your, uh, you know, with some people at work? Uh, it, it, it makes you realize that your connection to other people is so important. Um, and that's really one of the things that we're facilitating, we're maintaining, and we're training ourselves it, it, is to be, um, you know, spectacular human that, uh, you know, have a modicum of, uh, would say uh, humbleness and, and courage to them and the ability to withstand some criticism and, and hardship and trials. Those are qualities that people look for, for uh, you know, people to connect. They, they want positive human beings to be around. They, we, we're always looking for, uh, intuitively, every single one of us, we're always looking for, 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 for other leaders, for people to inspire us. That's why we look at each other for stories. That's why we create art about um, each other and other things, and why um, humanity is fascinating. Um, and Dr. Kano knew this, so that's why he thought we were better off together, certainly. <laughs> hmm. It is a little late, but um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very happy for doing this, very happy. Um, and so uh, on October 28th, uh, we will celebrate the ability of the judo family together around its values and its ability to share them with as many people as possible. And that's why I'm doing this, so I can share this with you. We invite you at your level, whether at the individual level or then if your club or federation, to think of solidarity by telling yourself that the hand and today may be tomorrow. And this is so true, right? Uh, you know, it's not going to capture this, but when we fall in we do our break fall, you go down, then you put your hand out, and your partner helps you back up, and you get back up. Um, and, and so that's why it, it's so important for us to utilize those, those great concepts from judo, uh, being attentive. When we see that opportunity to, to make compassion, um, to make that action, to help somebody when they need help, right? When they need a hand up, that's our job, right? That's why we train ourselves. 
it's not just so we can defend ourselves, right? When we're to, to perform techniques, right? I just did the the worst thing. <laughs> Don't at me. Don't at me. You know what I'm talking about. But but what we're training ourselves to do is attentive, attention, not just to protect ourselves, to protect other people, so that when the time comes, we can act, and so that we can be good stewards of our community, um, and so that we can uh, you know act with some solidarity and some compassion. Okay, now uh, we're, I, now that we've talked about solidarity, excuse me, hello, hello. Can we go back over here? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't start with me. I'm, I'm trying my best. Okay, I'm trying my best. And now I'm going to pull up um, some, I had the opportunity to collect some writings from some very uh, local leaders uh, that I'm very honored that they took the time out of their busy schedule to uh, communicate with me on the topic of solidarity. So just got to hang on real quick and we'll... Um... Is it this one? Hang on. I'm just trying to get to, to my correspondence now. I'm I'm looking for it. Woo. Okay. So here's a, a a small part of. I got uh, this is a a small, that I collected from uh, Joe Murphy. Joe Murphy uh, works for um, uh, he works in the in the union trade um, and I felt that he, uh, he could kind of call on the spirit of solidarity because um, of the way that he interacts with workers on a regular basis um, to me that seemed like someone with a um, um, a bit of expertise in the field 
of uh, of solidarity. So this is what uh, what what Joe what Joe uh, had to say to us. Okay. So in work and in life, solidarity for me has meant everything from hearing and respecting people's experiences to taking small actions such as honoring boycotts to larger ones like attending demonstrations and assisting with organizing. While learning judo, I've experienced something approaching that, I, uh, which has been working cooperatively with teachers and other students to safely and effectively learn, as well as identify and work on difficulties during class. We can't learn these things alone, just like we can't show solidarity alone. And uh, I thought that was um, a great point. So thank you so much. Uh, and Joe's a fantastic student. Let's find another one. So another... Next one could be... I gotta make sure I'm like message, I'm looking in the right app because there's different, <laughs> there's different message. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I myself am getting a little, not old, but you know, I'm, I'm having, I'm not getting around digitally as well as I used to. Okay. So this one is from uh, a uh, member of my local school board uh, that I wanted to talk about. I felt like an educator um, uh, especially one that works in the organizational aspect uh, of education um, that would be a good candidate to also speak about solidarity and what it means, what it does. Um, and so this is, this is from, uh, again, from Lupe Conscious. Uh, so Lupe says, what does solidarity mean to me? Solidarity to me is a feeling. It's the ability to have empathy for another group of people or another person based on shared values. There have been many instances in my life where I had to decide whether to be in solidarity with another group of people or remain silent or neutral. I remember seeing Eric Garner choked to death in New York City and seeing his daughter the next day express her grief in losing her father. I felt a sense of solidarity with her and her community. I felt the need to use my voice my talents, my activism to uplift her struggle and support her cause for justice. Solidarity is what creates movements and eventually creates change. It's people from various backgrounds sharing a common purpose or shared values, using those feelings to support one another against different forms of oppression, difficulty, or struggle. Uh, again, aptly described uh, uh, by one of our our great community leaders. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Lupe. Um, it, it's just, it, it's so informative um, to have these different, not even points of view. Um, because I, I, I won't pretend that, uh, you know, that this is a, a, a That uh, we we are we're covering the 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 nuance of the topic to the to the best of my ability, but um, but certainly the breadth uh, of of knowledge that's available to us um. Uh, to learn about solidarity here is is really has been inspiring so far. Let's see who's next. Who else did I have? Okay, uh, so here's another one. Uh, this one comes from my very good friend, Dr. Albert Saloza, um, uh, liberal arts professor at the uh, at Phoenix College uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and I asked him, I posed him a very similar question. What does solidarity mean to you? How, how do you see it? How can you uh, contribute to it? How can you cultivate it? 
This is what Dr. Slow said. Solidarity means our fates are intertwined. This is more true in our world uh, today than ever. Solidarity means we need to express compassion by protecting each other. This is one, one way to reflect and act on our common fate. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Dr. Saloza here um, is really pointing out also that um, solidarity literally means, right, uh, depending on one another. And this is something that uh, humanity and people have done for, I mean, for all time and probably will do for all time. It's count on each other. Again, that's the magic of humanity is our ability to assist, to communicate, right? It, it's not just inside me. It's not just inside you. It's between us, between us. I think I've got one more. Uh, and again, that one was from Dr. C. Uh, thank you so much for writing back to us, Dr. C. And uh, Joe Murphy and Lupe Conchas. Um, uh, all uh, of the our great local community leaders that I spoke with um, on the topic, maybe they will make sure to be cited in uh, our upcoming article with the Arizona Sun, which I'm very happy about. But, um, you know, uh, it's just because I love talking about the subject. Um, hardly ever get the time or the, the, the chance to uh, speak about the subject. Um, as, as we've talked about, judo is, is a very do sort of activity. Um, it does make the talking of and, and um, conversation around um, almost counterintuitive to a certain point. It, it, you can have like a very Yoda sort of conversation, like do or do not, no try. Okay, so and I wrote a, a very small uh, thing about World Judo t uh, Day today that I felt like I didn't want to copy necessarily, but there were some parts of it that I felt uh, that I had uh, written down earlier that I at least wanted to say for the purpose of capturing um, maybe like for clips or uh, just so we can kind of go back over and, and refresh what we're talking about. But so friends, it's World Judo Day. World Judo Day is the day when we celebrate the birthday and the founder of our school of judo, Dr. Jigoro Kano, his many contributions to humanity. Um, so happy 161st birthday, Sensei. Woo! Right? After exiting the tribulations of 2020, like many of you, I felt the need to stretch myself. And so the spirit of judo called to me again and to be of service in some small way. And I truly uh, feel that way. And um, that's why even now we're, we're continuing to plug along over at, at Arizona Aikido off of uh, 7th Avenue Kalmyk. You can make sure and come and join us. Um, but so I, I really did. I needed to... To, to express and, and, and stretch myself. And so this is part of, of what we're doing right now um, because judo is a martial art, but it's also a philosophy, a sport. It's a method for navigating life. And in judo, we practice techniques that instill control over one's body, mind, and spirit. And over time, we learn how gentleness triumphs over strength. We also learn how we all fall, we all fail, we all rise. Like everything in Judo, no technique is happenstance. On the contrary, there is a persistent and gentle strategy. And so too, there is also a gentle strategy to this year's World Judo Day theme, solidarity. Like we've talked about uh, in preparation, I've spoke with local leaders, educators, and workers to get the spirit of solidarity. I feel like I've learned an incredible amount from just the short amount of time that we've been able to speak and talk with them on the subject. I hope to do more. Um, I'd really like to also have um, our uh, fantastic uh, US Olympian, uh, Nick uh, DiPopolo. Uh, he would uh, just be a, a fantastic friend to also have on the stream here. Uh, that's and, and so we can also kind of get it with his idea of solidarity and what it means uh, to, to cultivate it, how we can do more, how we can do more in judo, outside of judo. Um, Nick would be a fantastic um, Ex not only example of someone that uh, ex 
is exemplary of the spirit of judo, but then also of the spirit of solidarity. Um, he's just, you know, he's a fantastic athlete uh, and is a <laughs> it's a great teacher. I asked him what he was doing today. He's like, ah, I'm teaching at a like a you know like a a, a, a judo school for for at risk kids. And I'm like, well, you're a swell guy. You you just tell me when you're available and we'll do an interview. <laughs> But that's the class. That's the class of person that we're dealing with. Okay, right? That's a, judo makes some um, regular people into better. I mean, not better people, but you know, good people. Um, maybe, and and maybe it's even true that uh, you know it can uh, you know enrich some people in ways that they didn't think that they could be uh, enriched before. I certainly feel like that. Um, so uh, yeah. So on the contrary, there is that persistent and gentle strategy uh, to the theme. We spoke with, with our local leaders on what it means, solidarity. What does it do? How do you cultivate it? What does it mean right now? Um, and how do you show it? Certainly. Like, how do you express it? How do you express it um, ap appropriately? How do you express it in a way that is that you can continue to express? It's not just like a one-off, right? Um, th those are all things that we have to, you know, consider, uh, new dimensions to, to the thematic formula, kind of, well, <laughs> I like playing out the idea in my head just because it's such a nuanced topic. It's so, uh, it's so both large and per, per and pervasive also, you know, generic it, it's, it's almost indicative of judo it's it's cyclical it's it's binary it's black and white at the same time it's a beginning and an ending right it's very very Taoist, very buddhist <laughs> just how dr kano wanted it i'm sure um uh, so like i said all of this information all uh i'm synthesizing it down just like dr kano for our article for the arizona sun um which i am hoping will be uh, published in the upcoming uh, winter issue and if you're interested in that, I'd really recommend that you reach out to the um, to the publishers and our uh, fantastic uh, Arizona Asian Chamber of Commerce, um, where you can subscribe or possibly ask for a copy of the Asian uh, Arizona Sun. Um, I'll be doing um, that scheduled stream with Nick here soon, but that's you know that's something to look forward to. So if you feel like you have a question. Um, for Nick on World Judo Day about the spirit of solidarity, um, you know, make sure to send it over to us because that's something that I would like to uh, to get out as well. How often are we going to have the opportunity to, um, uh, you know, get some of that great knowledge from a uh, current uh, Judo Olympian? I don't know if I will. And, uh, <laughs> and and I've trained with Olympians, you know, I'm, I'm always chomping at the bit. Another Olympian, we're going to Boulder, let's do it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, again, I've really appreciated anyone that's uh, t taken the time to hang out with us while we are celebrating World Judo Day. It's something that's so near and dear and close to my heart. And, and there's way more of us than, than most people know. Most people don't even un know how many uh, judo practitioners there are in the world. Judo is the second most popular sport on the planet, uh, uh, second behind soccer. And it's got over 50 million participants, 50 million fellow judoka brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, and, and that's the kind of... Um, a family you join and uh you know i'm i'm, I'm so uh blessed in a way to have had uh, dr kano's uh teachings to guide me um through my own i wouldn't say youth because i started training when i was uh in my 20s but um you know it, it was good it was good for me and i think it can be good for a lot of people really do really do All right. So with that said, um, love and, of course, solidarity. Um, again, special thanks to uh, to Joe and Lupe and uh, Dr. Albert Saloza for providing us just their thoughts 
on um, the spirit of solidarity on this uh, joyous uh, judo day occasion. Was it an opportunity to just get dressed up in my dogi? Maybe. <laughs> no, uh, this is my sacred armor, um, uh, you know, and, and, and judo is my sacred duty. So this just so happens to be a great happenstance where my um, my passion for, for streaming, for creating educational content, and uh, my passion and skills and education in, um, in classical judo, uh, kind of, they, they go inside here a little bit. And I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, as you know, not many people are going to be able to have, not, not that this is an experience, but are, are not going to be able to articulate the same story. Perhaps they will do better than me. I, I happen to think that some will, will not do as well as, as me, but, uh, no, I, I, I think we're doing okay. I think we're okay. Great. Fantastic. I love that we got to talk about Jitai Kyoe and uh, Senryo Kuzenyo. So, hang on. We're going to do an out now. Go. Oh. oh. Back. Pay no attention side of my face. Uh, so with that said, uh, thank you for joining us uh, for uh, World Day. Uh, uh, it's been a, a fantastic experience to go over uh, the thoughts on solidarity. So we're going to talk about uh, Dr. Kano's experience in life. Um, kind of us. Uh, I certainly think that uh, everyone will Give some thought, perhaps a, a moment of pause, uh, to think about um, you know joining a local judo club yourself, so that you can start cultivating uh, that attentiveness, so that we can be actively compassionate uh, for others, so that we can um, uh, also uh, responsible members of our own community um, and. Uh, you know, be the kind of human beings that are uh, not only uh, receptive uh, to, to to the potential of failure, but the failures of others, and is willing to work with other people. Those are the the people that do judo, and it's just so fantastic uh, when. Um, and I think that's why judo is so great because it it, it teaches people it. Um, to cooperate. Um, I could go on about it. I could go on about it forever and ever. Um, but uh, at some point, I imagine, um, we'll have to actually just get on the mats. So until then, until we, we're on the mats together, um, 